You know, after subsisting on a steady diet of cinematic crap for the past several weeks, I've been starting to feel the pace recently. There's a heaviness in my soul and despair in my heart. And trust me, you don't want to know what's in my liver. The point is, I've been looking for an antidote to this entertainment poison. Something that I could enjoy straight up without reservation or criticism. A movie to help restore my faith that there are still talented writers and directors out there producing films that are created creative, compelling and artistically uncorrupted by divisive politics or cynical money-making executives. And as it happens, I found one last night in Joker. And I'm not gonna fuck around with this review, I'm just gonna jump straight into it. Joker is quite simply a fantastic piece of cinema. A brilliantly written, masterfully shot, expertly acted and perfectly crafted movie that had me gripped from the opening scene until the final epic conclusion. A movie that had me buzzing as I left the cinema, knowing I'd just watched something truly remarkable. Now, I really don't want to spoil this movie for anyone, so if you don't want to know any plot details, then skip to this time code for my analysis and closing remarks. Otherwise, pour yourself a shot and let's get into this. So Joker kicks off in Gotham City in 1981. It's a city on the brink of collapse. Jobs and money are scarce, and crime and unemployment are through the roof. The citizens are growing increasingly angry and disenchanted with their lives, and the people who are supposed to be running their city for them. That's when we're introduced to Arthur Fleck. A mentally disturbed man whose condition causes involuntary laughter when he's stressed out or unhappy. Arthur ekes out a living as a party clown, struggles to look after his elderly mother, and harbours the vague goal of becoming a stand-up comedian one day, just like his idol, Murray Franklin, who presents a popular nightly talk show. On his way back to his apartment one night, Arthur has a brief encounter with his neighbour Sophie. But things start to go wrong for Arthur when he gets mugged and beaten up by some street thugs one day, prompting one of his workmates to give him a gun in case it happens again. When he accidentally drops it during a children's performance, he loses his job. He also learns from his disinterested social worker that the city's cutting back on welfare spending, meaning he won't get any further support or medication to keep his psychosis under control. He's on his way home on the subway one night when his condition attracts a group of drunken and belligerent Wayne Enterprises employees. When they start beating up on him, he shoots them in self-defense and flees the scene. But the reports of a murderer killing three rich men while dressed as a clown proves to be the spark that ignites the powder keg of Gotham City. The angry and disenfranchised citizens have finally found a target for their frustrations and it sparks a protest movement against the rich and privileged upper classes, especially Thomas Wayne, the millionaire industrialist who's planning to run for mayor. Invigorated by his achievement, Arthur strikes up a relationship with Sophie and tries his first stand-up comedy gig, but his uncontrollable laughter cripples him on stage and the whole thing ends up as a failure. Now it's around this time that he intercepts a letter from his mother to Thomas Wayne, revealing that he's actually Wayne's illegitimate son. Arthur's blown away by the realisation that he isn't just a hopeless nobody, he was born into something better and he becomes obsessed with making contact with his real father. He manages to sneak into a private function one night and approaches Wayne with this information, only for him to flat out deny it and claim that his mother was delusional and that she adopted him as a baby. Arthur refuses to believe this, so he digs out her medical records and he learns the truth. His mother was mentally ill and abusive towards him as a child, and the combination of mental and physical trauma caused him to grow up to be psychologically damaged. The news that he really was an unwanted, neglected, and ultimately meaningless child shatters what's left of Arthur's fragile sanity, and holy shit, this scene was absolutely devastating to watch. Now this this is how you break a character with a revelation about their lineage that totally changes their carefully constructed perception of themselves, knocking them down to rock bottom. Take note of this movie, my simple-minded, round-headed friend.
As he grows more and more detached from reality, Arthur visits his mother in hospital and smothers her to death with a pillow, then murders a former co-worker who comes to visit him. He wanders into Sophie's apartment in a daze that night, and we learn that his relationship with her was completely Tyler Durdened. He imagined the whole thing, desperate to believe that someone in this world might actually care for him. But his failed stand-up comedy routine has found an unexpected audience. A clip of him laughing uncontrollably on stage has made its way to his hero, Murray Franklin, who mockingly shows it on his TV show. The clip proves to be a big hit, and it results in Arthur being invited to appear in person on the show. He agrees to do it on one condition, that Franklin introduces him by the name Joker. As the civil unrest in Gotham reaches boiling point, Arthur makes his appearance on the show, where he admits to killing the three rich assholes on the subway, and bitterly rails against society for ignoring him. Then he takes out his gun and shoots Franklin in the fucking head live on TV. His actions causes the growing unrest to explode into riots all across the city, resulting in the death of Thomas Wayne and his wife in front of their son as they try to flee the chaos. And as Arthur's being driven to the nearest police station, the car gets rammed off the road by masked protesters, and Arthur gets lifted from the wreckage, held up with reverence like a god. Realising he's finally found the acceptance and voice he'd always wanted, Arthur dances and celebrates in the middle of the destruction while the rioters cheer him on. And that's it, that's basically the plot of Joker. Although to be honest, I can't begin to do it justice with simple words, but I'm gonna do my best to explain why this movie is so damn good. First and foremost, it's an expertly crafted, character-driven drama about a man's descent into madness and violent revenge against a world that ignored him his whole life. The pacing, the dialogue, the soundtrack and the cinematography are all spot on, perfectly capturing the feel of a city in decay and decline. It's an understated kind of film that doesn't have even a hint of CGI nonsense to get in the way. A movie that's anchored firmly on its main character, his journey and the actor who plays him. Speaking of which, the performance by Joaquin Phoenix as Arthur is quite simply phenomenal. I couldn't take my eyes off this guy all throughout the movie. I mean, clearly he's lost a ton of weight for the role, and it works, not just in his gaunt face and his weirdly misshapen body, but his mannerisms, his movements, his whole being. Never have I seen an actor able to play so many facets of a character simultaneously. The way he's able to go from vulnerable and pathetic, to devastated and emotional, to murderous and psychotic in the same scene almost defies belief. For anyone who hasn't seen it yet, pay particular attention to his eyes during these moments. He doesn't just change the look in them, he changes the very essence of what's behind them, and he brings all of it to the surface just like snapping his fingers. The sadness, the loneliness, the innocence, the frustration, the rage and the vengeance is all right there for you to see. Arthur is a character who changes constantly in this movie, not just his behaviour and his mood, but his understanding of who he is and where he comes from. The movie constantly pulls the rug out from under you, forcing you to re-examine who and what this man is, how he sees the world, and how other people view him. But even at his darkest and most maniacal, there's a core of pain and sadness in him. When he rants and raves about how society has treated him, he's not some calculating psychopath relishing every moment of this. He's an angry and wounded soul, lashing out at a world he doesn't understand, and which doesn't understand him. Speaking of not understanding Joker, this is a movie that provokes strong reactions amongst the movie critic community. It seems like everyone wants to slap a label of some kind on it, so they can either denigrate it for promoting dangerous ideas that threaten their worldview, or elevate it for aligning with their political beliefs. The good news though is that most of those people are clueless and increasingly irrelevant morons who care more about their own ideology than making an honest assessment of movies. But don't worry, the drinker is here to cut through the bullshit and tell you the real deal about Joker. Now a lot of people who don't really understand Joker, or movies in general, have claimed that this film glorifies incels and inspires them to hit back at the world for mocking them. This was interesting to me because 
I had no fucking idea what an incel was, so I had to look it up. But then I did, and it made me laugh, because it's just another example of professional activists- Oh, sorry, movie critics- trying to graft 2019 politics onto a film they can't or won't understand. The truth is that being an incel has almost nothing to do with Arthur's story. He fantasises occasionally about having a relationship with his attractive neighbour, but there's not much of a sexual element to this delusion. All Arthur really wants is genuine human contact act, love, companionship, acceptance and happiness, the things that have been denied to him his entire life. As a result, he's a desperately sad and lonely man that's been pushed to the very bottom of the heap by a society that doesn't give a shit about him. Joker is a movie that dares to suggest that straight white men can also be oppressed, marginalised and forgotten just like everyone else. So it's no surprise that today's activists, oh sorry again, movie critics have reacted so strongly to it. We can't have those pesky white men stealing any of those precious victim points, can we? The flip side of this perspective is the people who claim the movie advances a left-wing message because the central struggle is one of class warfare and privilege. It's a story of the poor, marginalised and exploited masses rising up in violent rebellion against their evil capitalist overlords. Again, this is a flawed and oversimplified assessment of Joker because neither side of this conflict is depicted as morally right or justified by the movie. The wannabe revolutionaries who are so eager to flock to Arthur's cause are all portrayed as violent, angry, murderous thugs who use their cause as an excuse to spread destruction and chaos. They're not interested in overthrowing the corrupt system to create a better and fairer one in its place. They're simply bad people who hide their envy, resentment and bigotry behind the facade of a righteous cause. Kind of like real life then, eh? Likewise, the rich and powerful people of Gotham are depicted as arrogant, dismissive and detached from reality. Thomas Wayne, for example, uses the growing civil unrest as a springboard to launch his political career, but the movie's ambiguous about what his true motives actually are. Maybe he's doing it for his own personal ambition, or maybe he really wants to help the citizens of Gotham. We never find out. Murray Franklin, the successful talk show host, is equally undefined. He mocks Arthur's failed stand-up routine and milks the embarrassment for cheap laughs on his TV show, but when he deals with him face to face, he's friendly, respectful and accommodating. Maybe he is just a rich celebrity who couldn't give a shit about the common man, or maybe he's doing what he can to bring a bit of humour and entertainment into an otherwise bleak and grim world. The movie makes no judgement about him either way. Both of these men are viewed from the outside, from Arthur's point of view. He has no deeper understanding of their drives, personalities or motivations, and so neither do we. And I guess that's the real takeaway here. This is a story about people failing to understand each other, about failing to see the other person's point of view, and how that lack of understanding can so easily turn to anger, resentment and vengeance. This is never made clearer than during his final speech on TV, where Arthur rages against a world filled with ugliness, hatred and injustice. A world where people see only their own perspective and angrily dismiss anything or anyone that contradicts it. Again, kind of like real life. I like how the movie's not afraid to take shots at the grandstanding, preachy, moralistic assholes who see it as their right and responsibility to police what everyone else should consider funny. The directors made no secret of the fact that he moved away from comedy because everyone gets offended by everything nowadays, and the end result is that comedians aren't allowed to actually be funny anymore. And all I can say to that is, rock the fuck on, sir. Ultimately then, Joker isn't a movie about any specific political ideology, and I think it's a pretty damning indictment of our society that this is how we're so desperate to frame it. The truth is, it's bigger than that, it's smarter than that, it's more fundamental than that. Joker is a movie that transcends politics. It's a story about human nature, a movie that speaks to our deepest fears and insecurities about the world, and about ourselves. And if there's a message to be taken from this movie, it's that perhaps we ought to deal a little more kindly with each other, not hating those who started out with more than us, or belittling those who ended up with less. 
not mocking people who don't fit in or demonising those who do. And for a movie made in 2019, that's not a bad sentiment in my book. Anyway, that's all I have for today. Go away now.